And joining us for a closer look on what's playing itself out in that market scene is Robert Tal from Sassford Wealth. Rob, always a pleasure. Good afternoon to you. Thank you. All right, Rob, it looks like it's a better end to a week, kind of, but what a week it's been. Yes, it's been quite volatile the whole week, but, uh, you know, we've seen some buying slowly come back into SA commodities, at least on the diversified miners. We saw a low of Anglo's probably just under 410, 409, and it's back to 430. Um, then we got, you know, against that, South 32 came out with poor numbers, so they've been weak the whole uh, the whole week. But in general, it looks like a little bit of uh, flow coming back into the general miners. Uh, we've also seen the, the bleed of the, the financials. The banks have been very weak. There's some buying coming back into there as well. So you know, locally, still very thin volumes, um, but it looks like some buying's coming back into the South African market. Overseas, though, markets have been still very firm. U.S. markets are strong. And, you know, and that's leading really uh, and, and pushing us forward as well. This week, uh, Rob, we will spend some time uh, really trying to digest a recession conversation. Uh, we're seeing it in Japan. We've seen the UK. All of it's still uh, rather technical, I think. But I'm keen to get uh, your thoughts on this one. We've been speaking, anticipating a recession, I think, even from early 2023. Nothing has materialized. But this data uh, is starting to pour in uh, very slowly from different parts of the world. Uh, and I'm keen to get your thoughts on whether we could actually see that recession really materializing. Well, if you take a look at the U.S. numbers, it doesn't suggest, uh, you know, that we're going to go into a recession in the U.S. Yes, Germany has come back uh, with numbers, which was a technical recession, Japan as well. Uh, but Europe is slightly different to the States. Um, and, you know, they've had uh, uh, quite a difficult time in Germany, especially with their car manufacturers uh, on the ice side, which is a big part of their economy. So they've been weak in general. Uh, but, you know... You know, the recession that never came last year, we're still waiting for, for on the worldwide stage. I think that you're going to need some interest rate cuts going forward. I think if interest rates do not get cut uh, later in the year and they stay higher for longer, that will lead to recession. But, you know, we expect in May uh, cuts coming in the, in the U.S. And if they do come, I think you could probably stay away from recession. But it's going to be quite close. And I think you really do need uh, interest rates to start coming down now. Also keen uh, to uh, touch on uh, US CPI, of course, that uh, also came in this week, Rob. How are you thinking about this? Uh, in my mind, markets possibly just need uh, to make peace with the fact that it's just going to be a bit of an uncertain picture before we get that first interest rate cut, uh, because the data, uh, you know, keeps pointing us in various directions. Well, yes, the number was a little bit hotter than expected, but if you, if you strip out some of some of the food data, uh, you know, it looks like the rest of the market, you know, the inflation is coming down. So, yes, there were one or two uh, spikes which pushed the whole CPI up in, in, in general. And it made the, I think, made the print look a little bit stronger than it should have been. So I think they've still got scope to cut, cut rates. And I think uh, the property market in the States is something that you really have to start looking at. There's a lot of stress in the property market and banks have got a lot of loans into especially office office parks uh, and office buildings in the United States. And I think you have to start taking a look at how much stress is coming from there. That also might lead to a change in the interest rates and you might see that the talk will be that they have to start to lower interest rates. So that's a sector that I'm looking at very closely. Yes, I mean, I've been speaking about commercial property. We know here at home, we just haven't seen uh, that uh, post-COVID-19 recovery for a commercial property. The office really battling. I'm wondering if the United States is a similar picture, if work from home uh, has uh, eaten uh, office spaces lunch. Definitely has. It's, you know, it came back a little bit. You know, companies like Goldman Sachs saying that you have to come back to the office. But in general, people are definitely working more from home than they were before. And there's a glut of office space. I mean, in South Africa, there's a really large amount of office space putting a lot of pressure on our on our retail uh, comp our property companies. Uh, you know, internationally, you know, people are slowly going back to the office, but there's definitely an oversupply of office and commercial space uh, worldwide. And we'll have to see if that starts to change. It's changing much slower than people expected. People thought that people would go back to the office much quicker than they have, and it's putting a lot of pressure on big property groups that are having to maintain buildings that are empty. Keen to get your thoughts also on what we're seeing with multi-choice here. We know Canal Plus came in with a 105 offer. Uh, we saw the share price yesterday breaching that 105 uh, number, I think even sitting at around 106. Uh, it's clear that a better offer has to come through here, uh, Rob. Well, I think so. They're pushing their hand a little bit here by pushing that price up to that 105 level. Maybe they'll try to get uh, 
uh, you know, a lucky price in there and they thought maybe it would be accepted. There are a few difficulties within how you can own a media company, uh, but I think they can get around it. So, uh, you know, we had a fair value of multi-choice at 105. So at 105, it's a fair offer. But, you know, if you wanted growth and you really believe in growth through Africa and through the streaming business, you'd expect a higher offer to come from Canal Plus. And they may be, they may be forced to put in a higher offer now that they've made their first uh, their first foray into the bid. Maybe 115, maybe 120, we'll have to see. The market is definitely you know, trying to push their hand. I also want to touch on NAMPAC here. We saw shareholders rejecting the remuneration package there for uh, some of their executives. Uh, of course, we know NAMPAC uh, is still really battling through uh, a restructure. Uh, and I'm wondering what to make of this decision by shareholders uh, to vote uh, down uh, the issue of uh, good packages, I guess, for the executives. It's a difficult one. Shareholders have lost so much money in NAMPAC, and you can understand why. They don't want to pay executives, uh, you know, huge amounts of, of funds. But at the same time, to turn around a business that operationally is very good, operationally has a really good growth potential to come right. You want to have the best people there and you want to be able to pay them the right, the right amount. So it's a difficult one in this case. I think you really want strong management because it's a business that can really turn around and really, you know, come back and give shareholder, uh, you know, a really good return for shareholders. So it's a difficult one. I think... To start, management has to show their, their hand more and see some, some positive outcomes in the share price. And then people will say, all right, well, you know, you're showing us what you can do, and therefore maybe the second time around we'll increase those salaries and allow it. But um, I think they have to really show that they are turning the business around, and then maybe they'll get those packages. Well, Rob, I want to get your stock pick in a bit, but first I'd like us to reflect on counters that have a found favor with your industry peers. My stock pick is Roynet, um, and and the reason why I picked it was because it's 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 the sort of stock that 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 encapsulates the value that you find in in SA small and medium cap stocks. So so this is a stock that has benefited a lot from the renewable energy cycle, um, and I think initially investors thought that was it. But it's a nicely diversified stock. They've, they're also in defense industry. Out of the uh, and and they're diversified out of South Africa. They're also in electronics. Um, they engage in R and D. It's not at a significant um, valuation, typical of um, SA Inc companies. Um, and and I think this is one that has good solid potential over the short to medium term. We've gone with Stellantis, which is uh, actually listed in Italy. They did report uh, this uh, today. Uh, it's the holding company for Fiat and uh, Jeep Chrysler in the U.S. So had very strong numbers. Uh, the shares actually uh, popped on the results. They announced uh, a good dividend and uh, a, a, a large share buyback program. So uh, the PE remains low. It's still after very strong share price performance, sort of a, looks like a Ford P of four with a dividend yield of about 6%. It just shows you how these... Uh, traditional ICE internal combustion engine car companies are valued so low, but we are seeing a shift away from BEVs, battery electric vehicles, back to internal combustion engine vehicles. And so uh, Fiat is very well placed, very strong uh, position in, in, in the U.S. where we see the economy remain strong, sales are being strong. The forward numbers may be not as exciting as it has been, the profits have been great, but it's still a very good value account, and we think it will continue to benefit as sentiment shifts away from electric vehicles and back to traditional vehicles. I'm picking Meta. I think uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg is is been ruffled a bit by Apple, so I think he's now going to start focusing again on making sure he offers a valuable product, uh, offers products to to the world, uh, and he makes them profit generated. So I think there's going to be quite a lot of movement on Facebook side uh, and I think Zuckerberg doesn't want to yield any of the markets to to them so that's a that's a good good move and a good indication for us well Rob keen to get your thoughts on some of those Roynet uh, Stellantis as well as Meta so in Roynet we've owned that uh, in our model portfolio at Sassman since uh, you know early last year we like the business and as you say they've got a very good uh, uh, defense business uh, they're cabling into uh, green energy. They supply all of the cabling. Once you build your your your, your uh, power station to connect it to the grid, you need their cabling. So it's a very good business. We like that, um, and we own we own Roynet, and it pays a good dividend as well. Uh, Stellantis, similar to all the car companies, as suggested. 
Volkswagen also very cheap at this stage. BMW, Mercedes, been under a lot of pressure of the ICE car companies. And I think also the high interest rates are, you know, putting a little bit of pressure on new car sales. And I think if you buy them for a, for a long-term view uh, and a value bet, I think you could do quite well. Stellantis, as you say, are paying a good dividend and a very really low PE. But I think that you'd have to wait for interest rates to cut, to be cut. So I think if the first interest rate comes in May, I think you could then be, be more confident in buying one of the car companies. Uh, the third one is Meta. We've actually own Meta as well, but we've just added again to our position. So you know, we like uh, Meta, and that's our stock pick as well. Mm -hmm. We think it's not just a social media company anymore. They will start to develop product as well with their VR glasses, and they're in the right sector. And AI is, you know, they already developed AI glasses with Ray-Ban, and we think that there's still a lot of growth potential in Meta. So that is my stock pick as well. Fantastic, Rob. Always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for wrapping the week up for us. That was your Midday Markets Update with Robert Tal from Assassin Wealth.